Bibles and go to, man, 1 Peter chapter number 5. Is it 1 Peter or is it 2 Peter? Yep, that's it. I'm continuing on something I ministered a couple of Wednesdays ago on carefree living. Carefree living, living free of worry and fear. And uh, we're going to continue tonight uh, ministering on carefree living, living in the rest of God. Living in the rest of God. Verse 6 says, therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, set aside selfish pride so that he may exalt you to a place of honor in his service at the appropriate time. Casting all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, and all your concerns once and for all on him, for he cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. My God, that's good. Is that it? Amen. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you uh, tonight for the awesome opportunity to minister your word. And Lord, I ask that you will give me utterance to open my mouth boldly, that you will give me words of wisdom, words of knowledge, words of understanding, Father God. Father God, I pray tonight that your people hear your voice in my voice. Let the body of Christ here be edified, built up, strengthened, refreshed, revived in the inner man like never before. Lord, let it not just be information, but let it be an impartation of your spirit. Father God, I thank you for what you're going to do in advance. In Jesus' mighty name, if you believe it, say amen. 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 How many people know that everything you're believing God for has already been done? Yeah. Yeah. Everything you're believing God for has already been done. Yeah. The Bible says that Jesus was the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world. Before Adam ever sinned in, in eternity, God had already fixed man's sin problem. So God is not some, somebody that um, uh, operates uh, in response to problems. He uses his foreknowledge of problems to create a solution before the problem ever shows up in your life. The Bible says, for the promises of God are yes and amen to God be the glory. So as far as God is concerned, according to his promises, his promises are already done in your life. The problem is not if God is going to do it. The problem is, are we going to receive what God has already done? Are we going to live this Christian life according to the way that God wants us to live it? Because if you're going to do it God's way, look at your neighbor and say, it's not your way. It's God's way. It's not your grandmother's way. It's God's way. And God has a prescription in his word that he wants you to receive everything that he's done for you. Listen, past, present, and future. Now, listen, some of y'all have a good resume with God, or God has a good resume with you. Some of y'all have seen the hand of God. You face situations, didn't know how you were going to get out, and you see the hand of God move on your behalf. I want you to know he's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. If he handled one problem, he'll handle another problem. And God wants us to walk through this life with that revelation. How many people know God wants us to live life by revelation, not situation? When you live life by revelation, you're not walking by what you see. You're walking by what you know. You're walking by what the word of God says. And it's at a higher level because you know that things that are seen are subject to be changed at any moment. At any twinkling of an eye, the master can change a situation. But sometimes we're waiting for a situation to change before we'll believe God for it. But God wants you to believe it before it changes and give him praise and glory on credit just because he's, he'll make good on his promises. Now, listen, God wants us to walk through through life in peace. He doesn't want us to be subject to anxieties. He doesn't want us to be subject to worries. He doesn't want us to be subject to concerns. But Pastor Tone, you don't understand the problems that I'm facing in my life. 
Well, no, I would say to you, you don't understand the God that I'm talking about right now. And if you understood the God I'm talking about right now, you would not even pay attention to those situations and those circumstances that you're dealing with. But God wants you to walk through this world in tranquility. The Bible says there's a promise in the book of Deuteronomy. God said, I will give you days of heaven on earth that you don't got to wait to get to heaven that you can experience heaven right here on planet earth how many people know god does not want you to walk in around absent of joy he wants you to have joy unspeakable and full of glory he wants you to walk in peace but the peace that passes all knowledge and all understanding peace that makes no sense in the natural realm are y'all ready to go to another level are y'all ready to walk and live in the kingdom of Almighty God? Yes. Amen. Now, tonight we're talking about living in the rest of God. I looked up that word rest. It means the refreshing, quiet, or repose of sleep. Refreshing ease or in inactivity after exertion of labor, there is a realm in God that we can abide where we are free from all work and all labor, which is the realm of his rest. Now, I can tell if you trust God. It's displayed in you. It's displayed how you react to life. And sometimes life can throw storms at us and the storms actually reveal if we trust God or we don't trust God. Now, there's a look for the person that trusts God. There's a lot of people in this room right now. If you walk by and look at them, you would think there's nothing going on in their lives. But they can look and, and pull you to the corner and tell you that all hell is breaking out in my life. And, it's, and you look at them and say, well, you don't look like it. <laughs> I don't look like it because I don't believe the lie. I believe the truth and I believe what God says and my truth is on display. My trust is on display by the way I look. Now, when you don't trust God, it's displayed also. It manifests in anxiety. It manifests in worry. It manifests in doubt. It manifests in unbelief. It manifests in no joy. Because if you really believe that somebody's about to give you a million dollars, you'll be jumping around before the check even shows up in the mail. And God said, I want you to believe me like that. That even though it didn't show up, that you will show the world and show the devil that you believe me before it even shows up by your outward display in the world. Look at your neighbor and say, I believe him. Look at your other neighbor and say, I trust him. Distrust is visible. It displays itself in worry or anxiety or trying to fix something only the Lord can fix. The Bible says, unless the Lord builds the house, those that labor, labor in vain. Sit down, relax and let the master work on your behalf. Sometimes we're trying to fix something that we're not supposed to fix. Sometimes we're trying to do divine intervention and God is saying, get out of the way for you make a mess. I'm trying to work in this situation. And because of your worrying and your anxiety, you are reacting out of time. You are reacting out, out of the spirit. You are reacting out of the way I would have you react. And you're making a mess out of the very thing I'm trying to fix. And God is saying, I want to see your trust on display by you entering into my rest. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now, Matthew 6, says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of seed time and harvest. Yes, sir. Let me say that again. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of seed time and harvest. 
My question is, what seeds are you sowing while you're waiting for the manifestation of what you're believing for? If a lot of us would focus on sowing and don't be worried about the concern. Yo, if I got a financial dilemma in my life, you know the first thing I'm going to do? I'm going to sow a seed. I'm going to seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. I'm going to sow a seed because God said, don't try to fulfill the need. Put it in the kingdom and watch the kingdom produce. Watch me add to your life. We got to begin to operate in the kingdom of God. We can't just come here and play church. You're going to give that church your money. You, you, you struggling right now. But this is the way I'm going to get out. I got to give my way out of this. I can't save my way out of this. I can't get stingy in this thing. I got to give my way out. I got to sow my way out of this thing. And we got to begin to function in the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of God is a kingdom of seed time and harvest. Somebody say seed time. Seed time is your participation. God is saying, I want you to begin to sow seeds. There's a scripture in the Bible, it's a story, not a scripture, in the Bible in uh, Genesis 26, and it's the story of Isaac. And the Bible says that Isaac was in a famine in his life. And the Bible says that he was tempted to leave the land of promise and go back to Egypt. And God said, do not leave the land, stay in that land. And then the Bible says that nothing was happening in the land, but God told Isaac to stay in that land. Then the Bible says that Isaac began to sow in that land, in that land. And then the Bible says that he began to reap a hundredfold harvest and the Lord blessed them. And the man waxed great and went forward in the land of famine. And the, the blessing was so powerful on his life that the Bible says that the Philistines envied him and God is saying you can be in the place of the kingdom but you got to begin to sow seeds in the kingdom of God now let me say this I was meditating on this and I'm like man wait a minute in the Bible it says when we enter into heaven Jesus is going to say this well done thou good and faithful servant God has not called you to church to sit down God has called you to church to serve in the kingdom so when you cross the finish line, you can hear those words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And I think a lot of times we're not seeing the manifestation of the promise and the goodness of God because we're not sowing any seeds. We're not sowing our time. We're not sowing our, our finances. We're not sowing love. We're not sowing compassion. We're, we're give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And God is saying, give me, give me, give me, give me. I heard a story by Kenneth Copeland, and he said, uh, the Lord told him, I want you to sow $50,000 into Kenneth Hagin's ministry. He said, he only had $5. He said, how in my world? He said, give me, give, give, me, give me that amount of money to sow. He said, sow, sow $50,000. He took the five, he sold it. More came, sold it. Sold it, and he began to keep track. A short window. He added it up. God, I gave 50000 See, sometimes God, we're waiting on it, and God is saying, use what you got. Man, if I had a lot, I would really do more. But God is saying, if you could just start with the little bit and watch what I do. I, you, you don't think you can do it, but you can do it. If you just give me the little bit, the, the, the faith of a grain of mustard seed, a small grain. If, if you had the faith of a grain of mustard seed, that, that faith would grow up and be the biggest thing that people can see. See, some of us are waiting for something big to happen. God is saying, I use a little thing and make a big thing. Give me your time. Give me your talents. Give me something little and watch what I do with it. Psalms 37 says, the little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. Because God takes a little and makes much. He that's faithful in the little will be faithful with much. What are you doing with the little? Seed time, your participation. 
time is God's time. Somebody say God's time. So you can sow a seed in the natural, but as far as what happens between the seed time and the harvest, that's supernatural. Then harvest time is your participation to receive what you sowed. Now, in God's part, it's time to rest. Can you pull up Genesis 2, 2? In God's part, it's time to rest. I started thinking about this. What are the times I've seen the hand of God move the most in my life? When I was resting. It wasn't when I was confessing. It wasn't when I was praying. Matter of fact, it just showed up. Matter of fact, sometimes God's got to tap you on your shoulder to remind you your prayer just showed up. Oh, then the light comes on. Oh, my God, that's what I prayed about. 2-2. Two, two. And it says, on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. Somebody say rest. rest. God worked for six days, and on the seventh day, he rested. In the book of Exodus, it said that God blessed the seventh day, the Sabbath, he blessed that day, and the, listen, so wait a minute, I'm like, out of all the days, he blessed the seventh day. So God is saying, in rest is my blessing. Yeah. When you're resting, you're under the blessing. When you're not resting and you're working, you're not under the blessing. My blessing comes on those who rest. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm resting now. I ain't trying to figure it out. I'm going to let God work it out. Now, gentlemen, can you pull up Hebrews 3, 16 through 19 in the Amplified? Okay. It says, for who, for who were they who heard and yet provoked them with rebellious acts? Was it not all those who came out of Egypt led by Moses? And with whom he was angry for 40 years. Was it not with those who sinned, whose dead bodies were scattered in the desert? And to whom he did swear an oath that they would not enter his rest. But to those who disobeyed, those who would not listen to his word. So we see that they were not able to enter into his rest, the promised land, because of unbelief and an unwillingness to trust God. So the children of Israel, this reference, God wanted them to enter the rest. God was trying to get them into the promised land, but they would not trust and believe the Lord. They chose to reject the Lord. They chose to rebel against God. And because of that, God said, you guys are not going to enter my rest, which is a type and shadow of our promised land. You're, listen, when you rest, you're in your promised land. Because when you're in rest, you're receiving your promise. But when you're out of rest, you block the promise and you hold up what God wants to do. And your receiving is going to happen when you're resting. Not worrying, not in fear, not in anxiety. You stop all movement coming into your life. But when you rest in God, watch it begin to come. How many people, listen, you, you, you've been all in the way and finally say, you know, I'm giving that to God. I'm done with it. Then all of a sudden it, it came, that, that thing just moved out the way. That thing just showed up. The power of God just began to manifest. What was that? God was saying, it's about time. <laughs> God, I was waiting for you to get out of the way. Believing is the doorway into his rest. Say believing. believing. You got to believe the word of God. A byproduct of believing is rest. So when God's word comes like right now, the word of God is coming. Your response has got to be, I believe it. I receive it. You can't just hear this stuff and not do anything with it. You can't hear this and then walk out the door and begin to be subject to worry and anxiety. God is saying you got to give my word more respect than that. This ain't Pastor Tony's word. 
This ain't the lighthouse word. This is the word of the living God, Jehovah, Elohim, Adonai, Yahweh. It's not my word. This is the word of God. I don't care who's preaching. I'm, I receive it, man. Preach that thing, brother. Come on. They would not enter his rest, but to those who disobeyed and would not, listen to this, listen to his word. So we see they were not able to enter into his rest, the promised land, because of unbelief and unwillingness to trust God. Somebody say, my will. will. You know you can will yourself? You can will yourself to get up and I ain't listen to this guy no more. Get up and walk right out. You can will yourself to trust God. You can just say, you know what? The devil is a, I believe God. I make a decision right now by act of my will. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to trust God. Every time I come in the house of God, I'm going to bless the Lord. I'm going to watch the words of my mouth. I'm not going to speak negative. I'm going to get with the program. I'm going to start tithing. I'm going to start giving. I'm going to start serving in the church. It's an act. Your will is in the way. Get your will to line up with his word. Amen. A lot of us are waiting until we feel like it. A lot of times you're not going to feel like it. You just got to do it. Amen. You know, I'm just going to do this thing. The Bible says if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Amen. Say willing. willing. Willing has to do with your attitude. What kind of attitude do you have? Somebody say attitude. I don't know about you guys, but I want people around me that are positive, energetic, um, problem solvers. That's the people I want. And it's, what I'm looking for, I'm looking for an attitude. Yo, Pastor Tone, we can do this. Yo, we can do this. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. We can do this. But man, look at this. It don't matter, Pastor Tone. You seen that man had them brothers under my arms? Holding them, them arms up? That's what I need around me. Yeah. It has to do with attitude. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I, I serve Bishop, the Lord showed me very quickly. I've not called you to be a problem to him. I've called you to be a problem solver. I called you to be a burden remover and a yoke destroyer. I called you to be a keeper of the flame, that the flame of God in his life won't go out. You don't be one of those ones that come and throw sand on the flame or water on the flame. You got to be a keeper of the flame and keep the fire burning in that man's life. I'm not going to get to heaven and be, be like, you didn't. <laughs> be like, Tom, are you all right? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? You the leader of this thing. How are you doing? You the, the captain of the ship. How are you doing? Don't worry about me. I'm good. Yeah. Leadership 101. <laughs> I, I, I despise going in that man's office, bringing him a problem. I said, God, I can't. Unless I could not resolve it. I, man, I can't. It's beyond me. I have to go now. But most of the time it was the problem came up and the problem is solved, sir. Man, thank you. Thank you, man. Believing is the doorway into his rest. The byproduct of believing is rest. Worry and anxiety are indicators that you are not resting. The Bible calls the rest the promised land. When you are resting, you are in a position of receiving, in a position of sweatless victory. Sweatless victory. Even though I'm up here sweating, it's still sweatless. <laughs> He's not sweating. Go to Hebrews chapter 4. Pull up Hebrews 4, gentlemen, 1 through 3 in the Passion. I 
I was like that on most of my jobs. It's positive, man. Let's, let's do this, man. If, if you would change your attitude, do you know you will begin to repel problems? Your problems will get less. But when you're negative, uh, pessimistic, can't see when the sun's come out, negative, you actually attract that into your life. Man, why well, I don't get no opportunity? What's been coming out your mouth? Your words are like boomerangs. What you send out is what's coming back. What are you sending out? Are you sending out blessing or are you sending out cursing? Because what you send out is coming back into your life. Amen. Can't get around. It's the law of seed time and harvest. That's why you'll never hear I'm broke. I'm sick. I ain't saying none of that. Man, you got snot coming. I don't care. That ain't what the words say. Say by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. Either I'm going to agree with this or agree with that. I'm agreeing with the word of God. Let, let every man, let God be true and every man a liar. Amen. Well, you lying, Pastor. You got, no, I'm agreeing with the truth. The truth is going to set me free. Yeah. Hebrews 4, 1 through 3. It says, now God has offered to us the same promise of entering into his realm of resting in confident faith. That's huge. Remember, the Old Testament is a type and shadow of the new. So it's saying that the promise he offered them is the promise he's offering us. That's why it's in the book of Hebrews. So we must be extremely careful to ensure that we all embrace the fullness of that promise and not fail to experience it. How many people want to experience the promise? Listen, I don't want to just hear somebody preaching it. I don't want nobody just laying hand prophesying over me. I want to see it show up in my life. What you got, to Pastor Tone, the promise. I don't want to just be hearing about this. I want to see it show up. It's like somebody telling you, you're going to get a car one day, you're going to get a car, and you're taking the bus. All right, where's it at? I'm ready to drive it. <laughs> Tired of taking this bus. So God is saying, I want my promises to show up in your life that you can experience it. Verse 2, for, for we have heard the good news. Somebody say the good news. Of deliverance just as they did, yet they didn't join their faith with the word. Now, the King James Version, I actually like it better. It says they did not, they heard the promise of the good news, but the Bible says they did not mix it with faith. Instead, what they heard didn't affect them deeply, for they doubted. For those of us who believe, faith activates the promise. Look at your name and say, faith activates the promise. Activates the promise and we experience the realm of confident rest for he has said I was grieved with them and made a solemn oath. They will never enter into the calming rest of my spirit. God's works have all been completed from the foundation of the world. For it says in the scriptures on the seventh day God rested from all his works. So we've been offered the same promise to enter into God's rest. He said, but a lot of them didn't, they feel to experience it because they heard the promise, but they didn't mix it with faith. Look at your name and say, you got to mix this thing. <laughs> now, when I hear that word mix, I instantly think of baking. Baking. What is your response to the word of God? Do you mix it with faith? The word you hear needs your faith mixed with it to produce what it's saying to you. Do you want a cake or do you want a bowl full of ingredients to make a cake? You know, when you make a cake, you put the eggs in, you put the mix in, you put all this baking powder, soda, all that stuff in. But... 
That's just ingredients. You have to put something in there and mix those ingredients together to form one thing. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, and it's the evidence of things not seen. It may not look like a cake in that bowl, but you got the substance, everything you need in that bowl to make the cake that's on the box. But you got to mix the ingredients in there to get so it can form into that thing. So when you hear the promise of God about he's going to heal you or deliver, you got to receive it and mix it with faith and enter into his rest, which is when it's baking in the oven. So eventually a cake comes out the oven. But you got to mix it with faith. A lot of us are walking around with the promises in a bowl. And God is saying you can't eat that stuff. You got to mix it. You got to bake it. And then you can take a slice and eat the whole thing. But a lot of us are hearing the word, but we're not saying, yes, I received that. That's mine. That's, that's mixing it. With faith. A lot of us is walking around with the ing all this word, ingredients, all these promises, but we haven't gone to the next level of mixing it with our faith. Do you want a cake or do you want a bowl full of ingredients to make a cake? I want the cake. I want cake. I want ice cream. I want the whole nine. I don't want it. Everybody's eating cake and you're walking around with a bone. God is saying, mix it. You got to can't just hear and say, I received that. I take it. I'm taking it home. I'm confessing it over my life. I believe it. I'm going to line my life up with this word. Period. I got to see it show up in my life. <laughs> Some of y'all want to go bake now. We'll bake a cake. I'm about to get some more revelation. I'm about to mix it up. Mix that thing. Go to Luke 8. Mix it. He said the word didn't profit them, the gospel, the good news, because they didn't mix it with faith. You got to mix it. Man, why ain't nothing happening in my life? You got to mix it. I'm telling you, I got to the point I've seen everybody else get blessed. I was like, man, the devil is alive. What are these guys doing? I found out they were mixing it. <laughs> they up there like, yeah, preach it, preach it. Then see them outside confessing it, standing on it, praying about it. Then all of a sudden, they love one showing up. I'm like, okay. I'm walking around with a bull. <laughs> Verse 22, it says, Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples. And he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. Say, I fell asleep. <laughs> and there came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commanded even the winds and the water, and they obey him. Now, he told them before the boat ever uh, sailed off, gentlemen, let us go to the other side. How many people know that God will warn you of a storm? I don't know if you ever had some, you were going into somewhere or work or a situation, and all of a sudden you got something, on the, a check on the inside, and it's like, uh, gird up. That's basically God telling you there's a storm on the horizon, but I've already given you my word, and you're going to make it through. Yeah. Look at your name and say, gird up. gird up. 
And God, Jesus, gave him the word while it was all calm. But notice, the Bible says that a storm arose. How many people know that anytime God speaks to you, the devil is going to throw a storm at you because he wants to take away the word of God out of your heart. He wants to distract you. He don't want. Look how quickly they forgot about the word of God. Even worse a thing, look how quickly they forgot about who was riding with them. <laughs> Wait a minute. I got Jesus in the boat, and we ain't worried about no storm. But a storm can make you lose sight of his word and of the person of Jesus Christ. Oh, wow. Ah, they're screaming. How? The plate, the thing was getting filled of water, and the Bible says that the water didn't awaken Jesus. Jesus was still sleeping while water was coming in the boat, while the storm was raging and bucking and all this, look at your name and say, God is a teacher. God is a, teacher. a lot of times God is trying to teach you something. I believe he was trying to teach the disciples, you know what? They depend on me too much. Let me just go under here and I know what's about to happen. Let me see if they can, they, they can, they, they can do it right. And they couldn't. They failed the test. Look at your name and say, God gives makeups. You ever, you ever had a test in school and then after the test, you, all the answers begin to come to you and it's like, man, why, why'd I go blank when the pressure was on? And that's what happens. We go blank when the pressure is on. We forget, we forget all the... Talk about rest. You forget the whole sermon of rest. You forget all of that. Ah, Jesus. <laughs> ah. You just came out the church and just told you to rest. He even used the scripture of a storm and you're freaking out because storms have a way of making you get amnesia. Man, I forgot all of that. Man, then, then, then after the storm is done or after the test is done, all the answers begin to come to you. And you're like, mm, how did I miss that? The storm came. But look, listen, the storm did not change what Jesus said. The storm could not change who Jesus was. The storm could not change them from reaching their destination. They still were going to make it to their destination. Look at your neighbor and say, you're going to make it. I don't care what's going on in your life. You're going to make it. I don't care what roadblock is up or what letter you got in the mail or what report you got from the doctor. I come to tell you tonight, you're going to make it. You're going to pass over to the other side. These light afflictions are but for a moment, but they're working for you a far more exceedingly great eternal glory. Jesus is sleeping. Then they wake the master up. Then he goes and he rebukes the wind. He rebukes the raging water. And the Bible says, and they ceased, and there was a calm. And he asked the disciples, where is your faith? What was he saying? You could have did it yourself. You called on me, I'm going to do good, but you could have did this yourself. You had what it takes. You had what it takes to get through the storm. I come to tell you tonight, you have what it takes to get through. God will not put more on you than you can bear. He will make a way of an escape that the test, the temptation will not destroy you. Anybody ever felt stretched? You can take it. You're going to make it. God will not let life stretch you where you snap. What manner of man is this? They heard the word, but they didn't mix it with faith. When the weather changed, they changed and forgot what he said. Despite the storm, Jesus stayed in rest. Jesus was trying to teach them you can rest 
while all hell is breaking out because I dealt with the storm before the storm ever showed up. He gives us his word not to put it on a bumper sticker. You can do that if you want, but that's not why he gave it. Or to put it on a refrigerator. He gave us his, his word to put it in our faith bank account to give us the fuel to outlast any storm that comes our way. The word of God is not given to us just to just say, man, I, I, I memorized that scripture. No, put that word in your faith bank account. We'll get to, to this at the end, at that point. He was teaching them, you can rest while all hell is breaking out. You can enjoy the peace that passes all knowledge and all understanding while you're waiting for me to show up or for my word to show up. Now, go to Hebrews uh, Saint, uh, chapter 4, and we're going to look at verses 9 and 11. We're almost done. Somebody say rest. rest. Take a deep breath. Let it out. Take a deep breath. Peace. Hebrews 4, 9 says, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest has also ceased from his own works as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. He that entered his rest has also ceased from his own works as God did his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Our work is to enter into rest. Now, why is it labor to enter into rest? Because there's forces that's trying to keep you out of rest. There's a, a, a worry that's trying to keep you out of rest. There is anxiety that's trying to keep you out of rest. There's stuff coming in the mail that's trying to keep you out of rest. There's phone calls coming that's trying to keep you out of rest. And you got to labor to say, no matter what, I'm not coming out to play, devil. I'm staying home and rest. I'm not going to freak out. I'm not going to lose my mind. I'm not going to get worried. I got to labor to push all that stuff away and stay in the rest of God. What is God dealing with? Or what's going on on the inside of us? All hell can be breaking out, but God wants you to be peace at peace on the inside. Because when you're at peace on the inside, he can bring that thing on the outside. But if you're not laboring to enter into that rest, you're into works. And God said the works were already done before the foundation of the world. I already worked it. Why are you trying to do a new work? I've already done the work. Receive the work that I've done. Can you imagine having a major builder in Tampa want to build something for you? And you get impatient and you go and buy all the material and start trying to build it yourself. That's insane. I would just wait. Man, I don't want to wait no six months. Well, you want something that a storm's going to knock down? You want something that a hurricane's going to knock down? Or do you want something that's going to last? Then if, that, if you want that, then enter God's rest and don't try to labor to do your own deal. So our labor, our work, our battle is to enter into rest. Man, Pastor Tom, I want to look at Nope, don't look at it. You know what? Don't look at it. Do something your flesh don't want to do. Pick up the Bible. This is the last thing my flesh want to do, Pastor Are you serious? Yup, pick up that Bible. But man, I, 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 no, pick it up. You're laboring now. I'm laboring. Okay. 
Man, I feel like somebody about to come knock at the door with a bad rip. Nope, nope, don't worry about the door. Stay in the rest. Don't worry, let them knock at the door. Don't answer it. <laughs> don't answer it. And just labor or he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This sounds crazy. Is this going to really help me? I will say to the Lord, yes, yeah, help me. I will say it's keeping you in rest. It's keeping you in receiving. It's keeping the door open. Just stay over there. I will say to the Lord, he's my refuge and my fortress, my God and my trust. But my mind is trying to pull me back out. No, come back over. Come back over. Don't, you're in control. Your mind don't tell you what to do. You tell your mind what to do. Get your mind to line up. Come back over. No, nope, we're staying over here. I'm not going out there. I can't fix it. The work's already done. I'm not going to try to do any work. God's already done the work. Amen. Surely he'll deliver you from the snare of the father. And what's going to happen? All of a sudden, your mind, your will, and your emotions are going to come in alignment. And guess what? Your spirit is going to take its rightful place as the lead. And then you're going to be in proper alignment. Then all of a sudden... The peace that passes all knowledge and, and you're going to be like, I don't even understand why all of a sudden I got peace now. Because now God who works in your spirit is now over your mind, your will and your emotions where the devil tries to pull you out of the rest. And you got to labor to enter into that rest. Lest any man fall of the same example of unbelief. Now, I wrote this few more points. Faith is the key to the rest of God. Our labor, our work is to enter the rest. When you are in faith, you are in rest. The Bible says the fight, the good fight of faith. Don't worry about the weather or, or the storms of life. Just don't let the outside get on the inside. Amen. Anybody, have, wasn't it raining last night? But could that rain affect you? You in the comfort of your home, you in your bed, you're hearing it outside. And I think a lot of us are hearing it, but it's, it, it can't touch you. Just because you hear the roar of the enemy, he can't get in. So it's like, I hear you out there, devil, but you know what? I'm in the rest of God. That storm can't get on me. But listen, you got to begin to feed your faith. Now, listen, sometimes I can feel my faith waning. I was like, man, I don't feel like I, I was believing God. You know what I do? I go into total consecration. No TV, no social media. Cut all that off and begin to intake the word of the living God through reading, through listening to teachings, begin to feed my faith with the word of God. And then all of a sudden I begin to feel my faith begin to rise back up, rise back up. And now I can see beyond the problem. There it is. I know. I know when I got it too. I see it. That's not shaking me because if I'm in fear, that means that has power now. It means my faith that is stronger. Remember, the Bible says you can have weak faith, strong faith. He marveled at the centurion's faith. So there's different levels of faith that you can have, but we want our faith to be strong. And if it's weak, you need to feed it. Why you ain't watching no movies with us? I'll be back next week. I got to feed this faith. This, this faith is paying the bills. This goes down, it all goes down. <laughs> Remember, life is always trying to contradict the promise. The most important thing you can do in this life is to feed your faith because the Bible says the just shall live by faith. Listen to anointed teachings. Feed on the word of God. Oh, I got to add this. Feed on the word of God. Listen to this. By reading it out loud. A lot of, uh, I read my word today. How'd you read it? I looked at it and it was in my mind. No. out loud because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You got to give a voice to this thing for faith to come. Reading is just for your brain. Sound is for your spirit. That's a whole nother teaching. 
Amen. We're going to stop right there. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Oh, <laughs> hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It was amazing. Uh, yesterday, I opened up my uh, partner letter from uh, Kenneth Copeland Ministries, and he's ministering on the same lines about casting your care to God. And I just read it yesterday, but we ministered this two weeks ago, and the Lord said continue it today because he doesn't want his people dealing with worry, uh, concern. He don't want that stuff bogging, bogging us down. He wants us to receive his goodness um, in, in our lives. Amen. Hey, amen. Before we close tonight, we always got to ask the question, is there anybody here you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If you're here, raise your hand. You've never accepted the Lord, made that decision. Amen. Maybe you're here tonight and you serve the Lord, but you um, just not been walking with him. You want to rededicate your life back to the Lord. If you're here tonight, raise your hand. You want to rededicate your life back to Jesus. Anybody. It's nothing but love here. Where? Where? Come on. Come on up. Oh, he's got to ask. Hallelujah. Whatever the need, please don't leave without prayer. Amen. Amen. I think, uh, Greg, we got meat we're giving out. Meat. They're giving out meat at the warehouse, so be blessed. Amen. Let's lift our hands up to the Lord. Father, we just thank you uh, tonight, Father, for uh, your amazing promises. Father, we, we just uh, forgive us for not responding correctly 
to your promises, Father. They've been given to us. You, 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 you paid the price for us to have them. So, Lord, we uh, mix these promises now with faith. We receive all your goodness into our lives. Father, seal the word in our hearts. Bring it back to our remembrance in the time of testing, in the time of need, Father. Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Amen. Be blessed. Amen.